Hi, I'm Steven, and in this episode, I'm going to learn how to make some tasty pasta, then try and create a video game about it. Pasta is my lazy backup dish. It's what I make when I want something quick and easy. I boil some prepackaged noodles, heat up some canned sauce, throw some cheese on it, eat it, and be like six out of 10 satisfied. Which is all right, but I feel like I'm missing out on a whole world of flavor potential. So I'd like to see if I can learn how to make delicious pasta from scratch and turn my backup dish into one that can hopefully impress a professional chef. Like a lot of kids, I grew up playing video games. In those days, being able to create a game didn't even register as a possibility to me. These days, anyone with a laptop, work ethic, and a ton of creativity can create a game that stands toe to toe with the AAA games of industry giants. In this episode, I wanna see what it's like to be that person and make a video game about making delicious pasta. This is the Making Stuff episode. Because I need to understand everything that goes into making the perfect pasta before trying to make a video game about it, I met up with a local chef to get a recipe and some pasta making insight. What is the biggest difference between store-bought pasta and pasta that you make from start to finish at home? Um, well, I know what goes in the pasta that I make at home, and then the store-bought stuff has preservatives and other things like that that I'm not always so jazzed about. And you can use it to brag to your friends. Yeah, exactly. You're better than them. Oh, look at this beautiful fresh pasta. <laughs> I made this from scratch. <laughs> what am I going to need to do when I present this pasta to you for it to be considered a success in your eyes? Okay, for the, for the pasta part of it, we need to make sure that we work it together enough, knead it together properly, and then um, we don't want it to be overcooked or undercooked. And then for the sauce itself, we want the oil to get to get hot, but not too hot, or else it destroys the, the nice flavor of the olive oil. And then for the garlic itself, we don't want to burn it because that'll make everything taste really bitter. And then same with the tomatoes. Okay. You don't want to you don't want to burn that either, or else it won't be nice and beautiful anymore. Cheers. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. I mean, you're probably used to this, but this is just like. I'm really looking forward to cooking this mm. every week. Forever and I'm trying to master it. Make sure you make oh, this seriously. much of a mess. Yeah. This is how you know you did it right. You made yeah. a big mess. The recipe card gave me was for a pasta called cavatelli, a thick, chewy type of pasta with a garlic and basil tomato sauce. My plan to master this is to make it a couple times a week, feed it to people, and make changes based on what I think could be better and their feedback. This is the most money I've ever spent on pasta ingredients. <laughs> Does that sound pretty gross? Oh, yeah, that's just <laughs> Look at that. What do you think? I don't think there's as much like flavor in the sauce that jumps out at you. Still delicious, best pasta I've ever made. Yeah. And my sex air girlfriend. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah? You made this? Yeah? For me personally, I'd want it to be a bit softer, but like it doesn't matter. I'm not a food expert, so. Okay. I'd give it a like a five point seven five. Oh God! Out of ten, really? That's like that's like literal garbage. <laughs> literal garbage would be two. <laughs> okay. Presentation, it's a little sloppy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could eat this regularly. I like it. I'm impressed. Yeah? Mm hmm. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. I do have a whack palate though. The more I eat it, the more it's like, okay, this is blander than it should be. Yeah.
if I was at a restaurant, I for sure would not order this again. <laughs> it's like a little too gummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so let me first bite in. Four. Okay. Out of ten. Mm -hmm. And what's a success to you? What would you What would you be? Expecting? Something really flavorful. Okay. This was about three weeks into making pasta. And while I was working on this skill, I started to learn how to use the game design software Unity. All right. First tutorial of many, probably. What you see here is about 35 hours of software tutorials learning how to program and me trying to copy a game tutorial from YouTube and call it Cavatelli Bird for legal reasons. Mostly due to how much I was struggling with learning how to code, I was starting to realize how in over my head I was. At that point, I decided that the best thing to do was to make some initial designs of the game and get some advice on the best way to develop it. So I met up with the head of XGen Studios, the company responsible for games like Defend Your Castle, The Low Road, Super Mother Load, and a bunch of other games that got gaming websites banned at my school growing up. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What are some of the best things that I can do to make sure that the game isn't total garbage? We do a lot of like demoing to the public just to get like users to see how they interact with the game, to see if it's obvious to them. And I think just like always learning from other people too and like what games do you think are fun and questioning what's fun in that game. This is how I would approach building a game, but there's probably a million different ways to do it. I would suggest you start by deciding the genre of the game. Then you'll want to pick the theme of the game, so obviously what you want the player to do or what you decide what's fun, play test your game. It's just an iterative process as you decide what engine to use to build the game. After getting some more context as to how much actually goes into making a game, I realized that my initial design that included four mini games and a chef that was secretly your dad was probably not realistic. Maybe the final mini game in this, once you find out that he's your dad as you play baseball with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> if that's something you actually want to do with the game, then it's valuable to spend time on <laughs> I think I think that's great though, isn't it? Okay. I think it would be really hard and we shouldn't do it. <laughs> no? No, as you're building a fourth game now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After my meeting with Kay Lynn, I cut the game from four mini games down to just a start screen, a Cavatelli rolling mini game, and a sauce making mini game. And I decided to keep the secret chef dad, even though Lindsay the director thought it was dumb. At that point, I had five weeks to get the game finished, master the pasta, and present it to Kara and Kay Lynn to try and get their approval. Oh, it's two minutes, perfect. Huh? So, uh, is it really homemade? Good. Yeah, everything everything's from scratch. From scratch, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. My goal today is to try and figure out exactly how I'm going to use my fairly limited design skills to still make this look passable. Okay, it's been about a month since I started working on the start screen, and now it's pretty much done and ready to go. And now I have one week left to finish the rest of this game. I know it doesn't seem like much, but to me, to be able to click on a piece of pasta to become Cavatelli and then go over to that bowl with a bit of delay. That's taken literally like 10 hours to figure out and it feels so good. I think tonight I'm just gonna have to brute force it and separately code 30 different pieces of pasta to fall all with different scripts. It's not gonna be clean, but I think it'll work. 
It's 5.15 in the morning. Things are coming together. Still got a lot of work to do. Four days till I gotta present this thing. For the second mini game, I'm gonna try and use the knowledge that I currently have and just apply it to this, rather than having to learn a whole bunch of new different functions and codes, because uh, I just don't think I have time. I think I'm finally starting to get the hang of this. Not in like a professional way, but in a way that I understand how things work and if I wasn't so tired, I would feel way better about it. Uh, yeah, just imagine that there is dialogue and, okay, and it says, oh, watch out for the cat hand. You gotta click on the cat hand. Oh, he stole the garlic. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Freaking cat. <laughs> After getting Lindsay's feedback on the game, I spent the next two days making adjustments to the gameplay, making it pretty, adding the scoring system, and writing the Chef Dad dialogue. And with a few hours of sleep under my belt, I added some sound to the game while the two judges waited patiently downstairs for the presentation to start. The goal? Get as high of a score as possible from Kaylin and Kara on both the Pasta and Cavatelli Master Maker. Oh, it goes like, but do you have to drag it or you just have to click on it? Uh, no, oh, just click on it. Click it, it goes boop, 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 boop. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. That's so cute. <laughs> they're speeding up as you go. Oh no, they're, now there's seven cats. Now there's seven cats. <laughs> and there's more cats. Ah, <laughs> Doesn't ah. sound like you guys are doing so hot. Ah. <laughs> It's actually really hard to hold. There we go. Is that one? That was one, right? Oh no! <laughs> How are we? No garlic. What happens if we hit the bell? Maybe we could redo it. Maybe? No? Not allowed. This is the worst past I've had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got it. 120, that's a, that's a bug. Something's going on there. <laughs> you definitely did not get 129 points. I wonder if it's adding up. It must be adding up between plays. You haven't earned your perfect score yet. Yeah, so your game isn't, uh, it's just continually loading. That's actually a big problem. You got salt in your tomato sauce? Uh, no. Should I be putting salt in it? Yeah, of course. Uh oh. Just throw a little tablespoon in there. A little tablespoon of salt? Okay. Oh. No. He's free pouring it. Oh my. It's just a it's just a pinch it's of salt. Not, just, just like a little just a little <laughs> just a little tingle of it. I hope that's not too salty. Did that look like more than a tablespoon? Did that look like more than a tablespoon? Just a little. <laughs> yeah, just throw a little tablespoon in there. So you guys have had the pasta, you've played the video game. What are your scores for each? Well, the bug that we found was like fun, but <laughs> yeah. you know you gotta get rid of that. Aesthetically, I really like the color choice. I think okay. it's fun. For the pasta, for the actual pasta itself, I thought the pasta oh, was better you. than the first time we made it together. And the sauce, unfortunately, you oversalted it. And then so overall, we'll just give her a, a seven out of ten. Okay. And that's how you make a pretty all right pasta. And a fun, quirky video game about that pasta. And now I'm gonna sleep. All right, as far as takeaways go for this episode, my first one is, is that it is absolutely possible for an individual to make an awesome game with no experience. It will just be very difficult. My second takeaway is that by being meticulous for months with how I cooked this pasta, I gained a general appreciation for well-cooked food, which has had a positive impact on everything else I've cooked since. And the last one, I should have measured it. I shouldn't have just thrown it in. 
Yeah, you, you only throw it in when you're a seasoned, a seasoned vet. You Someone know? who's very good at seasoning things. Yeah, exactly. And you make sure to play test your game so there's no bugs. <laughs> <laughs>